The local government is a branch of government closest to the people. Rural development ought to revolve around it. But the supposed closest system of government to the people, particularly the rural masses, is indeed very far away from them. The people hardly know what goes on in their councils in terms of the programs and projects that benefit them. In fact, in most cases, there are no projects at all, let alone the ones impacting the rural people. Worse still, even the council chairman elected and appointed don't stay in their council area. This is worse in councils in rural areas. The 1976 local government reform that created the third tier of government was aptly aimed at bringing democracy and good governance closer to the grassroots. It aptly made provision for the election of councillors and chairmen who are people well known to their communities and who can be easily assessed by the people to know the needs of the various communities. But with the military incursion into governance, the local government system was dismantled like other democratic structures, leading to the collapse of the system. Military leaders began to appoint council officials who in turn owe allegiance only to those who appointed them rather than the people they were meant to serve. The 1999 constitution, which ushered in the present democratic dispensation, though granted a sort of autonomy to the local government council, but the governors never allowed the autonomy to function. They hijack council funds from Abuja, appropriate them as they deem fit, and release patents to the council leaders. The governors exploited the state's local government joint allocation policy, which gave the state's governors the power to control local government funds. This policy has rendered the local government system ineffective as the governors control the funds and decide what goes to the local government. The local governments are part and parcel of the state. The whole idea of making the council the third tier of government has been defeated as the people in their rural areas are not benefiting from the system. The council chairmen do not feel safe to reside in their local council area because they operate as an agent of the governors in the uh, looting of the council's uh, funds and account through dubious system. The governors give them patents, which is not enough to run the council administration. So the council chairmen are always hiding in order not to come face to face with the people of the council area who are the legitimate sovereign owners of the resources being looted by the governors and their surrogates. My advocacy, therefore, is that the only way to have a functional local government system is to go back to the regional autonomy so that the local council in the regions can be properly financed for genuine development. If local governments are allowed total access to the funds from the federation account or federation allocation, internally generated revenue and subvention from the state, the narrative will change for good. You know, there is an existing law that mandates the state government to give a certain percentage of the IGR of the state to the lo local government. When examined closely, the contradiction in Section 7, Subsection 1 of the 1999 Constitution, which empowers the state government through state assemblies to create local government council, and the same constitution mandates the National Assembly to provide legal backing to the local government through Section 8. This is where the federal and the state government flex muscles over existence and running of the local government as a, as a tier of government. Due to the loophole created by the 1999 constitution, governors control all the activities of the local government areas, especially financial transactions. The council cannot execute any project without approval from the state governor. Section 
7 subsection 1 and 8 of the 1999 constitution as amended should be amended to provide for more viable local government system in Nigeria. I shall go to Rabbi again. <laughs>